In this video, I'm going to show you how to do bear shaft tuning, which is the best way to tune a recurve style bow. You're watching the Jay Kaminsky YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Jay Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery, and I'm working to make this channel a great resource for all types of archery. Right now, I'm working on a lot of tuning things as well as form stuff, and also working on creating a library of exercise videos specific for the sport of archery. So if you're serious about archery and interested in learning more, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, so that way you get notified every time a new video is uploaded, because I'm starting to pump out a whole lot of new content, and you won't want to miss what's coming up. And real quick, I would like to thank my Patreon supporters for supporting this channel. Uh, thanks to them, I'm able to do this more full time. I'm able to put out a lot more content and able to ultimately help the archery community at large. So thanks to them, I'm able to do this and put out more information for everybody else watching. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, I'll put a card at the top as well as I'll put a link in the description below. And so you can check that out because there is some exclusive benefits that they get that you won't see here on this YouTube channel. So bear shaft tuning is basically the only way to properly tune a recurve style bow. Some people say they shoot through paper and try to get a bullet hole, but in my experience, that's quite difficult, especially because our arrows flex a whole lot more than a compound does, you know, because compounds, they shoot through paper to get a basis of a tune um, and they do it at different distances. So it's not just a single snapshot of time. So I found that if I change the distance of where I'm shooting through paper, I never quite always get a bullet hole because our arrows flex so much as they're flying through space. So it's, in my opinion, not the ideal way to actually tune a recurve. You can get an idea on how your arrows are flying with a piece of paper when you shoot through it. I'll definitely do another video about that because shooting arrows through paper, even out of a recurve, is a really important tool and it is something that you can use to your advantage, but we're gonna save that for later. So before I show you what to look for as far as actual bear shaft tuning and, and how to fix faults, I really want to kind of preface what you should be doing first. Meaning ideally, I would recommend doing all your bear shaft tuning at 30 meters, even with your indoor arrows. So even with these big giant fat arrows, these are 2712s at 36 and a half inches. I tune these at 30 meters just to make sure that I have an actual proper bear shaft tune. If you don't do it far enough, uh, like if you only do it at 18 meters or 20 yards, there is a possibility that you'll get a false tune or a false reading on your tune because there's just not enough time or enough distance for your bear shaft to start to plane off one direction or the other. So you will get a falsely positive reading, meaning positive it's good to go, whereas if you were to go back to 30 meters, you uh, will see different results. So like I said, I would suggest doing all of your bear shaft tuning at 30 meters. However, if you've never bear shaft tuned before, I wouldn't be afraid to start bear shaft tuning at closer distances like 18 meters or 20 yards because it's pretty hard to miss a full bail at uh, 20 yards, especially if you have no idea what your tune is. But once you go back to 30 meters, it's actually fairly easy, especially like if you're an arrow spine off or two, to miss the entire bale with your bear shaft and you don't wanna be hunting for a bear shaft in the grass. And anything out past 30 meters shooting bear shaft wise is kind of useless and pointless. Uh, there's too many environmental influencing factors out there to really get a good tune at 70 meters. Um, I've shot bear shaft at 70 meters as well, you know, just to, to play basically, but not really manipulating my tune um, while, you know, actually shooting the bear shafts at 70. I just shot them because they were in my quiver. I wanted to see where they would end up on the target or see how they flew, things like that. But ultimately, I wouldn't recommend actually using a bear shaft tune at 70 meters. Okay, so I prop my target up on a chair here just to kind of put it at a good height so I can demonstrate to you and show you where and what to look for when you're doing bear shaft tuning. Uh, before I get any further though, I do want to talk about this actual target and tell you about it. This is uh, from Reinhardt. I will put a link in the description below where you can get these on Amazon. They are not cheap, but they are by far the best targets out there, hands down. There is a lot of arrows that have been shot into this core and you can replace it. I love this target because I could take it on the road with me, especially like if I was driving to a tournament and I needed to blank bail in the hotel af afterwards or adjust my tune or whatever. Just throw this target in and it's, it's great, but it pulls so easily. 
If anybody's shot on a Reinhardt target, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Once that arrow starts moving, it slides out like butter. It heals amazingly well, and uh, it doesn't hurt when you pull the arrows out. So if anybody's ever pulled some arrows out of some tight bales, you know that it doesn't feel the best when you're breaking those arrows free. So absolutely, this is a must have if you are going to be shooting a lot of arrows, get yourself a Reinhardt. I'll show you uh, my couple recommendations of ones that are about this size uh, that you can pick up and they will last you forever. And you can replace the core when you wear them out, which is even better. Oh, and uh, disclaimer on those links, they are Amazon affiliate links. So when you click on those links and you either buy the stuff that I'm recommending, or even if you buy anything within 24 hours, I do get some revenue and some income from that. So anytime you do click those links and you're shopping on Amazon, you're helping out this channel. So I do appreciate you doing that. Okay, now we're gonna talk about actual bear shaft tuning. You'll see that I have three uh, flat shafts and three bear shafts. So you'll notice that I have at least three flat shafts and at least three bear shafts. And that is important because of this reason. All right, so you'll see that I've got uh, two flat shafts and two bear shafts in the target. So if I'm only shooting two, this can happen and this oftentimes happens. You have your two, bear sh or two flat shafts, they're pretty close together in the target. And then you have one bear shaft over here and one bear shaft over here. So how do I know if I'm slightly stiff or slightly weak? How, how do I know? And it's really difficult. So until you shoot that third arrow and it lands near one of the other two, now I know that I'm actually slightly weak as opposed to potentially stiff. As this YouTube channel progresses, I'm gonna teach you about bear shaft selection and how to avoid this type of situation. But even after I do what I'll tell you eventually, this can still happen. Um, meaning that one arrow still doesn't land within the others. And sometimes that could be my mistake and I made a mistake. Sometimes that's the actual arrow. So that's why I always recommend shooting at least fl three flat shafts and three bear shafts. So you don't have to have three flat shafts. You could just shoot two if you know you shot two great shots. Um, I still do three. And the order that I shoot them in is also important. Especially in the beginning of people's archery experiences, they're going to treat this arrow different than this arrow because this arrow is scary to shoot because it doesn't have the veins on it. So when they do that, they're actually going to shoot these arrows differently than these arrows. And if you're shooting the arrows differently using different form, different technique, different timing, etc., the tune is changing. So what you're seeing here is not actually, this arrow was not shot the same as this arrow, so this tune is not correct. It's not real. So the way that you can prevent from treating your arrows differently depending on which one you're shooting is to just simply alternate the arrows. Shoot one flat shaft and one bear shaft. One flat shaft, one bear shaft, one flat shaft, one bear shaft. If you do that in alternating fashion, and it could be bear shafts first, it really doesn't matter, but as long as you're doing it in alternating fashion, you're not going to be changing or treating the arrows differently. Or at least it's far less likely for you to be doing so because you're confusing yourself, okay? Everything that I'm going to be recommending from this point forward is going to be for people that are right-handed. If you are left-handed, you will have to just flop what I am saying. Meaning, right now, what this is showing me is that these arrows are slightly weak for me. If it was for somebody who is left-handed, these would be slightly stiff. So the general rule of thumb when shooting bear shafts out of a recurve is that if your bear shafts land to the right of the flat shafts, your arrows are weak. If your bear shafts land to the left of the flat shafts, they are stiff. If your bear shafts land high of the group, then your knocking point is too low. A quick note about the left-right uh, switch. The vertical does not switch from left to right-handed. If your bear shafts are hitting high, your knocking point is low regardless of right or left hand. And if your bear shafts land low compared to the flat shafts, you have too high of a knocking point. And if you have bear shafts that are both left of the group as well as high, that means that this is a stiff arrow with slightly too low of a knocking point. So you can have a combination of the two. All that bear shaft tuning is doing is it's allowing you to see the actual true flight path of the arrow without having the stabilizers or the veins on them. Once you start putting veins on arrows, it corrects any sort of flight characteristics that are not going to make the arrow fly truly straight. So that means that this arrow is impacting in a way that shows us truly how the arrow is flying in space. And then we can adjust the bow 
um, through different ways to actually make the arrows fly perfectly straight even without fletchings. And then when you add fletchings on, they're gonna fly extremely straight and be very forgiving when you make mistakes. So again, the whole goal of bear shaft tuning is just to make the arrows and the bow itself work in unison so that way they are both working together to push the arrows perfectly straight every single time. If the bow is pushing the arrows extremely straight, anytime you make a mistake, it won't be varying a whole lot one direction or the other. For example, if you had a bow that was very weak, you may make more mistakes or have further out mistakes on one side versus the other when you were to make a mistake. And so that is basically just showing you that the bow is not forgiving. The whole point of tuning your recurve is to try to make it be happy and be more forgiving. Okay, so now we're gonna get into talking about actually how uh, you can affect the tune and how you can change it. A quick note to think about if you're really confused as far as if this is stiff or weak is just to think about how the arrow is flexing. If I'm right-handed, my riser is on this side of the arrow and the plunger and arrow rest would be down here, yeah? So as I'm shooting, if the arrow is too weak, too weak means the arrow is bending too much as it's coming out of the bow. So if it's bending, the first initial move is kind of this direction around the bow. And so if it's too weak or bending too much, it's going to bend too much around the bow and it's going to impact to the right. So if you were left-handed, and the arrow is flexing too much, it'll bend around the bow and hit too far to the left. The same thing is also true when you're talking about stiffness. If it's too stiff, the arrow is gonna come off the bow and head that direction. So if the arrow is too stiff, I'm going to hit to the left for a right-handed shooter. So there's always the questions of what do I adjust? How do I get my tune better? What do I adjust first? My bow weight, my arrow length, my point weight, plunger tension, etc., etc., etc. Yes all of those can be effective. However, let's talk about vertical first. So if my arrows are impacting low, meaning my, if my bear shafts are impacting low of my flat shafts, that means my knocking point is too high. It's simply illustrated by this, as if the arrow is flying this direction, if the knocking point is too high, the bear shaft's going to want to dive down. So if my bear shafts are low of the flat shafts, that means that my knocking point is too high or my arrow rest is too low. So it can be a combination of the two. If you have an adjustable arrow rest, if I'm hitting about this low, I will, I will start by just bumping my arrow rest up just a little bit. Not a lot of change is needed for this far off. If your bear shafts were landing way down here, like you know about a foot from your flat shafts, then you absolutely need to just move your knocking point because your arrow rest will not have enough adjustment to fix this far off. But if you're only a couple inches low, try bumping your arrow rest to start. Your tiller can also change your knocking height. Uh, I've already explained that during the tiller video that I put out. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll put a card at the top and uh, there'll be a link in the description below as well. However, um, I never recommend adjusting your tiller to change your knocking height. Um, that's not really going to be effective because the tiller affects a whole lot more than just your knocking point, especially how the string feels on your fingers. So that covers the vertical change. It's actually very simple. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just knocking point or arrow rest. But when you start talking about stiff or weak, that's when it really starts to get complicated because there's so many options to change and adjust. The main thing that is really going to affect your tune is of course going to be your arrow spine. So if your bear shafts are very far off the target or very far away compared to your fletch shafts, meaning at 30 meters, you're more than two feet off, or even you're having a hard time getting your flat shafts to impact the bale, you definitely have the wrong spined arrow. At 20 yards, if you're more than two feet off of the target, you're really not gonna be able to get your arrows to be tuned in without changing the actual arrow spine. So if you're really far off on that, you're not gonna be remotely close to having a correct arrow flight. My main adjustment that I always go for is the bow weight or the draw weight. So when I'm changing my draw weight, it's just so much easier than changing my plunger tension or changing my point weight or my arrow length or any of those things because all of those other things either affect the way the bow actually performs, um, meaning how forgiving it is, or it, or it takes so much time to adjust itself, like taking arrows apart, recutting points or re-gluing them in or whatever. 
that takes a whole lot of time. I can pull an Allen wrench out of my quiver and adjust my bow weight within a minute. So uh, definitely I always suggest going with your bow weight first. So if your arrows are weak, that means you have too much bow weight. You can adjust your bow weight down. If your arrows are too stiff, that means you don't have enough bow weight. You need to increase your bow weight. It all has to do with how much the arrow is flexing. If it's not flexing enough, there's not enough power going into it. More power means more bow weight and it fixes your tune. Pretty simple. The next major thing that I like to adjust if my bow weight is really just not getting it close enough is my arrow length because arrow length is relatively easy to adjust and it still affects the arrow tune a whole lot more than just adjusting the plunger. So say if my arrows are this weak, I've already taken my bow weight down as far as I can and I don't have a lighter set of limbs or I'm really just not interested in shooting that light of poundage, I can take these arrows out and I bet you if I cut a quarter inch off of these arrows and made them just a quarter inch shorter, that's enough to make these arrows become uh, reasonable as far as tune goes. Maybe I'll cut more than that to make them go stiff so I can bump my bow weight back up to bring them back into the group. There's kind of a game to play there as far as like, as far as which direction you want to start with. So that can be explained pretty simply. A longer thing is easier to bend. A shorter thing is harder to bend. So if you're shorten shortening the arrow, that means you're stiffening the arrow. As you put weight on the back side of an arrow, it stiffens it up. If you put weight on the front side of an arrow, it weakens it up. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple to think about and illustrate. So as I'm letting go, the string is pushing from the back side, okay? And if I were to have more weight on the front side, that would want to resist the actual arrow from moving from the front of the arrow. So as the back is being pushed, it's going to flex more and more and more until this point starts moving. For me, that's something that I didn't really adjust a whole lot. That's why it's quite far down my list that I'm giving you. Um, because, for example, I knew that when I was shooting outdoors, specifically with an X10, I for sure wanted to shoot a 100 grain tungsten point. Anything more than that, or a stainless point, the arrows just didn't group very well for me, and I really preferred the 100 grain tungsten in the X10. However, when shooting indoor arrows like these, or the X7s or something like that, and because you're shooting indoors, you can adjust your point weight a whole lot. So instead of changing my arrow length, uh, because once you start cutting your arrows, you can't glue the arrows back together to make them long again, I'll grab uh, different points and glue in heavier points to change this type of situation. Actually, this situation, I would need lighter point weights because I've already explained that to you. So indoors, you know, your stock points are anywhere from 60 to 100 grains depending on the actual arrow itself and also depending on what point you're buying from the actual manufacturer. But there are accessory points that are available out there on the market like the top hat points that you can order up to 300 grain points. So not only can you have this type of point shape, which is like a knockbuster or a 3D style point, but you can adjust your point weight a whole lot. And so indoors, when I was shooting 2312s, I would actually shoot them at the exact same length that my X10s were, but instead of running a 100 grain point, I'd end up running anywhere from a 160 to a 220, depending on the individual setup that I was running that year. All that it's doing is it's really breaking down the spine of the arrow to make it more manageable. So I don't have to run such a long arrow or shoot such a high bow weight to make the arrow fly good. And the last thing that affects your tune is your plunger tension. I saved it for last because I really don't like to change my plunger tension. I found that just about every single one of my bows, regardless of bow weight, regardless of arrow spine, as long as I was shooting the same type of arrow, like still shooting an X10 or still shooting an X7, the plunger tension that shot optimal for me, the best groups and the most forgiveness, was always basically within a half a turn of a different bow set up with the same plunger. So meaning, say if I was shooting a win and win and then I grabbed a Hoyt, uh, and one was tuning at 48 pounds, one was tuning at 46 pounds, one needed uh, four tens, the other needed four fifties to have the same tune. After I did my fine tuning, which I will get into later in this series, I always needed about the same exact plunger stiffness setting. So because I know that, I try to keep my plunger stiffness the same without really adjusting my tune. However, if I'm just barely off, say if I'm an inch off, you know, I might, I might add or remove three clicks to bring my fletch shafts into the group of the bear shafts. 
if I was looking for an absolute perfect bear shaft tune. So the way that you adjust your plunger to change this type of sit situation is if my bear shafts are landing to the right, that means that my plunger is too weak. So it's being pushed in too much and the arrow is heading towards the right. If it was too stiff, the arrows would hit that way because it would be launching the arrows away from the bow. So there's a way, there's a balance that you're looking at here with tuning your bow. It's how much the arrow is flexing, how much the plunger is absorbing, how much power the bow is putting into the arrows and how much the arrow is flexing, how much the arrow is resisting movement via the point weight. So how much the arrow is flexing. It's really just a juggling of all of these factors. So like I said, the way that I broke this down is in the order that I would recommend going through. First, you have to have the proper arrow stiffness. Then you should change your bow weight, then your arrow length, then your point weight, maybe your knocks, and lastly, you should adjust your plunger. I will be doing another video explaining the plunger and breaking that down. I'll also do another uh, video coming up shortly on how to uh, change this versus this, where if your bear shafts are landing crooked and very close to the flat shafts, how to fix that as well. So like I said, if you haven't now, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified when this video does come out and it won't be long before this video comes out. Um, I just didn't want to make this video too long in itself. Thanks for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com, and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.